Next presentation, the impact of socioeconomic status on major amputation patients with peripheral vascular disease and diabetes mellitus by Dr. Rachel Fan from St. Louis University. Good morning, my name is Rachel Fan, and I'm a medical student at St. Louis University School of Medicine. Thank you for the honor of speaking to you all today. The authors have no financial disclosures. Socioeconomic status is a major determinant of disease. The causal pathways between socioeconomic status and disease are complex. The prevalence of peripheral vascular disease and diabetes mellitus is on the rise in the United States. Both peripheral vascular disease and diabetes are leading causes of major lower limb amputation, which we define in our study as either an above knee or below knee amputation. While low socioeconomic status has been linked to poor health outcomes in disease states such as peripheral vascular disease, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and end-stage renal disease, the association between low socioeconomic status and amputation outcome in diabetic patients with peripheral vascular disease is less defined. Thus, we aim to determine how socioeconomic status as an independent variable impacts the outcome of concomitant peripheral vascular disease and diabetes. Such an investigation is important because it can help identify high-risk groups for amputation, which can be targeted for early prevention and intervention. Understanding the impact of socioeconomic status on future lower limb amputation can guide health policies and future research. We conducted a case control study our study population included 2009 St. Louis Veterans Affairs patients who were identified by ICD-9 and 10 codes for a dual diagnosis of peripheral vascular disease and diabetes mellitus between the time period of January 2012 and December 2017. We divided the patients into two groups, an amputation group and non-amputation group, based on whether or not they had corresponding CPT codes for major lower limb amputation after dual diagnosis. Patients who received an amputation secondary to trauma, lymphatic disease, and malignancy were excluded from the study. We assigned each patient an area deprivation index score based on his or her nine-digit zip code at the time of dual diagnosis. The area deprivation index, or ADI, is a validated tool developed by the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health that can serve as a measure of socioeconomic status. It ranks neighborhoods by the block level on a scale from one to 10, with one being least disadvantaged and 10 being most disadvantaged. Thus, the ADI score is inversely related to socioeconomic status. To assess the normality in the ADI data, we performed the Shapiro-Wilk normality test, which yielded a p-value less than 0.05, meaning that the hypothesis of normality is rejected. Since the ADI data is not normally distributed, we performed the man whitney u test to compare ADI scores between the amputation and non-amputation groups. We perform logistic regression to test the association between socioeconomic status and amputation status after controlling for covariates, which included age, sex, race, smoking status, and history of chronic kidney disease, congestive heart failure, hypertension, and COPD. We analyze the covariates using chi-square or Fisher's exact tests for categorical variables and t-tests for continuous variables. <coughs> Of the 2009 patients included in the study, 85 of them received a major lower limb amputation secondary to dual diagnosis of peripheral vascular disease and diabetes, yielding an amputation rate of 4.23%. This table displays the univariate analysis of a relationship between the study variables and amputation status. Um, patients in the amputation group were younger with a median age of 68 years compared to the non-amputation group with a median age of Sorry, patients were younger with a median age of 65 years compared to the non-amputation group with a median age of 68 years with a significant p-value. 98% of the patients were male and 75% were Caucasian. The distribution of race in the amputation and non-amputation groups was statistically significant with a higher proportion of African-American patients in the amputation group. In terms of medical history, patients in the amputation group were more likely to have chronic baseline chronic kidney disease with a significant p-value. Based on zip code, the ADI score of the physical location of the St. Louis VA healthcare system is nine. The median ADI score of the patient population is six. Patients in the amputation group had a median ADI score of eight, while patients in the non-amputation group had a median ADI score of six with a significant p-value. 
Thus, ADI is larger by a value of two in the amputation group compared to the non-amputation group. On multivariate analysis, after controlling for confounding variables, our logistic regression model looking at the association between socioeconomic status and amputation status yielded an odds ratio of 1.10 with a 95% confidence interval of 1.01 to 1.19, indicating that the odds of being in the amputation group are significantly increased by 10% for every one increase in ADI score. ADI scores were organized into four quartiles. This table reflects the descriptive statistics of the study variables across the four ADI quartiles. The median age of the patients remained constant throughout the ADI quartiles. The proportion of African American patients increased as ADI quartile increased, while the proportion of Caucasian patients increased as ADI quartile decreased. Our study has several limitations that are inherent to retrospective studies, including unavailable data in charts and no randomization. Additionally, the findings within the St. Louis VA healthcare system may not be generalizable to the VA healthcare system nationally or to non-VA patients. The VA population includes more male patients than the general population. The study assumes that everyone within the same zip code has the same ADI level and socioeconomic status, which may not necessarily be true. The ICD and CPT codes never perfectly capture clinical variables, but are used as proxies to clinical disease and care. Patients in the study may have received part of the medical care of peripheral vascular disease and or diabetes outside of the VA health system. In conclusion, after controlling for comorbidities, we found that patients with peripheral vascular disease and diabetes residing in neighborhoods of lower socioeconomic status have increased odds of undergoing major lower limb amputation despite access to the same healthcare system. The St. Louis VA healthcare system represents a whole system with multiple satellites and covers a wide draw area in Missouri and Illinois. This healthcare system provides medical and surgical care, inpatient and outpatient rehab, transportation, and even financial coverage for procedures done outside the VA. Within the same healthcare system, there is an increased need for better identification and treatment of patients with peripheral vascular disease and diabetes in areas of low socioeconomic status to prevent amputation outcome. Our study builds a foundation to drive future research and determine if there are modifiable factors present in patients within lower socioeconomic status groups. To address these disparities, ded dedicated approaches to treatment strategies, education, and advocacy for diabetic patients with peripheral vascular disease of low socioeconomic status are needed to improve outcomes and prevent the devastating outcome of major lower limb amputation. I'd like to take the time to thank my mentors, Dr. Imad Zakhari and Dr. Matthew Smeds, for their guidance and support. I would like to thank your statistician, Andrew Gibson, for his contributions. And I would be happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you. Great job. I think we've been really lucky to really have a lot more research on social, uh, social determinants of health for patient outcomes and, and patient care overall. And I think that's <coughs> true for vascular care as well. And I think it's, we get the same kind of information as to those for minorities, as you mentioned in your database too, mm -hmm. are most likely to be disadvantaged, most likely to have worse outcome, outcomes in this case with major amputations and so forth and based on your ADI index. So I guess the question I have for you is, we know this exists, we know it's a problem, we now have you know, years of knowing that this is a real issue with the same kind of healthcare system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, these patients have the same transportation access, correct, mm -hmm. from the VA. They have the same, you know, health care coming home, like home health um, arrangements and so forth. Mm -hmm. Why were we still seeing this? Yeah, that's something we were wondering as well. Thank you for the question. Despite access to these same resources, there are still other factors that can be contributing to these disparities. Um, patients within low socioeconomic status groups may be seeking health care at a way later time than patients who have higher socioeconomic status due to not having a PCP. They might not be catching you know, their disease at an early stage given that these diseases start asymptomatic. And there could be differences in diet, underlying stress, physical activity. Um, so our next steps are to identify if there are modifiable factors that we can target and address those and then hopefully improve outcomes. Dr. Bush. Uh, Ruth Bush, Houston, Texas. So I congratulate you on your study. Um, Similar to a commentary, one of my partners, Meryl Simon Logan, and I wrote recently 
Vascular surgeons are health disparities doctors, so thank you for this data. In the VA, my question for you is, in the VA system, presumably everyone gets assigned to a primary care doctor. You have to go through multiple steps to get referred to vascular surgery. So have you all looked at how many of those patients actually had appointments with a PCP within the system? Is it a matter of the gatekeepers at the VA? Because everybody presumably gets the same level of care, again, depending on service connection, which I have never understood. Um, but looking at their primary care doctors, have they received appropriate referrals, gotten plethysmography, you know, gotten a <laughs> pulse exam, anything like that. And also, I would encourage you to look, perhaps in a smaller group, uh, looking at health literacy, because socioeconomic status could be a sign of health literacy or even health advocacy. So again, congratulations on your work. And my long-winded uh, question is really about looking at the primary care entrance. Into your That's a great point, and we unfortunately did not look to see whether or not our patients actually followed up with their PCPs, but that's something that we can um, look for in future studies. So thank you for bringing that up. Dr. Dewari. Thank you. Yazan Dewari from Atlanta. I think uh, patients with diabetes are obviously at increased risk for amputation and, and trying to look at uh, reasons to understand what uh, drives these amputations is very important. Um, a few years ago, uh, when she was at Emory, Dr. Shipra Arya, and currently in Stanford, looked at uh, the association between hemoglobin A1C levels at, at uh, different time points and uh, the risk of amputations in diabetics who undergo any, even after undergoing any vascular intervention. And I wonder if uh, along the same lines uh, that Dr. Bush was uh, talking about, uh, if you could correlate if you could add to your uh, low socioeconomic uh, status uh, factors, if you can add to that um, optimization of medical uh, treatment to see if, you, if really just the presence in a low socioeconomic uh, place would, uh, would add to your risk, or is it really driven by uh, poor management of chronic medical conditions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I don't really have a good answer for that right now, but that is definitely something that we can look for and um, study at a later date. Um, but yeah, that's a great point. I, I don't have a good answer, <laughs> but thank you. All right. Great. Thank you.